everyone, my name is Jerry, and I'm here today with the Art Gallery of Greater Victoria to share with you a project from the Teacher Resource Guide in the present moment. You can download this guide for free from our website for more information on other artists and projects you can do at home. So today, I'm excited to share with you a Victoria-based artist who combines his Coast Salish cultural knowledge with his own unique vision. His name is Dylan Thomas. And he works in many different uh, art mediums, including wood carving, jewelry making, recently stone carving. But today we're going to take a closer look at his print making and painting practice. I'm going to use um, as much as possible Thomas's own words through interviews and videos and publications as a way to learn more about his work. I do this with great respect for the artist and his culture. You see, I'm not Coast Salish, and I'm really excited to learn more, but want to do so with care. So what does it mean when I say Coast Salish? Well, the Coast Salish people are indigenous to not only the lower mainland of Vancouver and the southern tip of Vancouver Island, which includes here in Victoria, but look at this map. Look at how vast their territory is, and it includes many indigenous communities and cultures. It's really important for us to use the proper names for these communities whenever possible. And in fact, did people, actually let's back up here a sec. Do you know what indigenous means? So indigenous were the first people living on the lands, the lands that we refer to as Canada. The Art Gallery of Greater Victoria is on Coast Salish land. Specifically, we're on the traditional territories of the Lekwungen speaking people, today known as the Esquamalt and Songhees nations. And we are really grateful to be living and learning here. So Dylan Thomas was born in Victoria and he's lived his whole life here. He's a contemporary Coast Salish artist. Do you know what it means when I say contemporary? Contemporary simply means that the artist is more than likely alive and working today, or the work has been created in the last 20 years. So Dylan Thomas is a member of the Liaison First Nations, and his ancestry is from the Songhee, the Squamish, and the Sunamuk nations. I practiced and I've watched a lot of videos, but I too am still learning some of these pronunciations. So with that, I thought I would share with you um, something that Dylan Thomas said. He says he hopes to use his experience as a Salish artist, my experience as an indigenous person, and my experience as a lifelong resident of Victoria to create work that meaningfully honors the local indigenous people, past, present, and future. So from the first time he saw First Nation art prints, he was passionate and he decided that he wanted to create a career in Coast Salish art. He really enjoyed it and learned more and more about the geometry of Coast Salish art. He said, I wanted to find out more about geometry in traditional and modern Salish art. Many traditional spindle whorls have mirror symmetry and occasionally our ancestors used rotation symmetry in their art. I realized the infinite possibilities of geometrical design. Since then, I've been using geometry in the majority of my work, and its use seems to come naturally to me. So, symmetry, what is that? Symmetry means what happens on one side happens on the other. If we put an imaginary line down the center of my face, one side mirrors the other. Now, I mentioned Coast Salish design. Do you know the elements that make up Coast Salish design? I thought we could learn a little bit more with Coast Salish artist, Sean Peterson. We're gonna look at a little bit of a video that he created. Hey guys, Sean Peterson here today with a video post about Coast Salish design elements. Now I know when I started, I wish somebody posted something like this, so I'm hoping I could help somebody learn because there's not a lot out there. So let's get started. First, there's a circle or oval. There are crescents. And there are trigons. 
Now, people use several different terms to describe the shape, but I use trigon. And in this particular illustration, on the left, we have a positive trigon, which is painted in, and the negative, which is left blank. Now, this final term, extended crescent, is one that I've come to use just recently, and before I used the term U-form to describe this shape. Now, U-form is a term that's borrowed from terminology that discuss form line art. Form line art is made primarily of the ovoid at the top left and U-form shape upper right. And then the lower side of this illustration, you can see the overlapping shapes coming together to make a framework of sorts. Now, because Coast Salish art is based off of low-relief carving sculpture, in this case, a spindle whirl with a bird image, you can see that these carved out areas, even though they resemble somewhat a U-form, it's not consistent enough in a wireframe approach, and form line is not really what Salish art is, and I'll talk about that later. So in this example of a Salish eagle, we can see that if we reverse the positive and get rid of the contained field on the outside, the black, it's really hard to read what's even going on in this design. Even though we have the containing elements, they're only really successful by being pierced through a silhouette. So this really simulates what the carving tradition is, carving these areas through. We're really thankful for Sean Peterson giving us permission to share that video with you. We'll include a link if you would like to watch the rest of it. So another interesting thing about Dylan Thomas is that he's a practicing Buddhist and he sees an awful lot of connections between Buddhist sacred geometry and Coast Salish design and culture. In fact, let's look at his print mandala that he created in 2010. Thomas said, during the time I was making the prints that use symmetry, I became very interested in Eastern philosophy and meditation. I came across a collection of Buddhist mandalas. Mandala is a Sanskrit word that means circle. In the Hindu and Buddhist religious traditions, their sacred art often takes a mandala form. These are geometric works of art that show concentric circles that represent the cosmos from the human perspective. They can be used as a meditation tool, focusing the viewer's attention to help achieve deeper states of meditation. The pieces I saw were beautiful. I instantly saw parallels between the mandalas and my art. Both were very focused on symmetry, and like Salish spindle whirls were confined to a circle. This inspired me to make a cross-cultural piece simply titled Mandala. So I'm curious, where do you see Coast Salish design elements? Can you find a trigon? How many trigons do you see? What about a crescent? A circle? Look, we can even see concentric circles, which simply means there are two or more circles sharing the same center point. Now let's divide the circle in half. Is it symmetrical? Now, we, now that we understand symmetry, let's look at a special kind of symmetry Thomas likes to use called radial symmetry. Let's look at another one of his artworks that he created called The Union of Night and Day in 2018. In radial symmetrical design, there's a clear center point and the individual sections of the design radiate outward equally from it. Can you find the center point? Now, think of the artwork divided up into four equal pieces, like a pie. Can you find the repeating patterns and how each section is the same? This is radial design. Thomas says, I enjoy doing cross-cultural art because art itself is one of the only practices that can be found in all cultures. Art is one of the things that makes us human and bridging different cultural art forms helps me to feel the unity of humankind. In these two artworks, Dylan Thomas interconnects Coast Salish and Buddhist geometries to produce a design that 
emulates the Buddhist ideals of nature and order and calmness and beauty and community. And now it's our turn to have fun making a mandala. Here's the materials you're going to need. I brought just a plate. Uh, you can use anything that's circular and you'll maybe want a pencil, um, a marker, maybe some type of material, uh, uh, tool. I'm gonna use markers to color it in. You could use crayons, uh, you could use pencil crayons or paints. Um, you need a pair of scissors. And if you want to mount it, a glue stick, I have some black paper. Uh, you could use white paper or any color paper that you want. So to start with this, uh, since I'm not Coast Salish or Buddhist, I decided to go outside and find some natural materials outside my own home to use for inspiration. I picked three that were outside my front door that I thought might be fun for my mandala. And I made, I think I even have it, I made a symbol for each of them. You can see what I did for my fern and my rose and then the ivy. So what you're going to need to do, once you have maybe the symbols that you want to use, if you want to use more, you could. I choose to do three. You're going to need to make a tracing of your plate and then cut it out. I'm just gonna kind of fold mine in half. Now, because I did mine with marker, I'll probably use the back side so you can't really see the marker. Your circle might be bigger or smaller than mine. As the artist, you'll get to make that decision. Once you have cut your circle out, I'm going to say what we should do is fold it in half and make a nice crease and fold it again. And then when we open it up, remember that pie shape we were talking about? <gasps> there it is. So I'm going to start by creating a center point. I'm just going to start with a circle. Now, if my circle is really small, that means I'll have a much larger area to draw in. But because I'm thinking about time and wanting you to have time to do the artwork instead of me, I'm going to make a bigger circle. Maybe I'll make concentric circles. They're a little off, but that's okay. So here's the secret. Remember with radial design, what you do in one section, you need to do in the others because we're trying to keep it symmetrical. So I think I'll start, whoops, with my fern shape. And I'm going to put one in each part. you might decide that you want to bring your design over two sections of your pie slice. And that's okay, just so you remember, it has to be the same on the other side. You can also decide to float things in the middle of the shape if you want to. I'm just going to draw mine really quickly so that you can get to doing your own work. So there's my idea, my symbol inspired by my fern. I think I'll put this uh, Christmas rose shape in. Maybe I'll put it in between. But remember, whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other. Maybe I'll just do a circle right now. Maybe we'll do some rays off of it, like kind of inspired by the sun. And then maybe what I'll do is kind of that ivy shape, like here and here. Oops, almost didn't do it exactly the same. <gasps> and connect them. So once you have your design done, and you can make yours as intricate as you want, I'm thinking about not taking too long because I think it's more exciting to do your own artwork than to watch me. And this is when you can color it in. So I'll just quickly kind of show you, maybe you just want to color the shapes. Maybe you want to color in the background. You can decide to color it however you want. 
And once you're finished coloring your whole thing in, feel free to mount it. And you'll have your own mandala inspired by cross-cultural works created by Dylan Thomas. Please be sure you share with us so you can hashtag AGGV. We can't wait to see what you create and your thoughts about the video we created today.